to the Cosmetic Podcast. This podcast amplifies the topics you want to hear about. Cosmetic means being a person or thing that gives rise to a phenomenon that is dynamic or energizing. Globally minded and locally focused. I'm Rodrigo Ross. I'm Keith Benson. So today we are talking about ally, amplifier, or accomplice. Who are you? Because there's many people that are in there, like your multiple personalities that you may have a, uh, Well, at times. everyone has their own dynamic and their own, so I might have all three. I don't even know what you're talking about. Yes, personalities. Yeah. So an ally uh, will mostly engage in activism by standing with an individual or group in a marginalized community. Mm -hmm. An accomplice will focus more on dismantling the structures that oppress that individual or group. And such work will be directed by the stakeholders in the marginalized group. You know, simply ally work focuses on individuals and accomplice work focuses on structures of the decision making agency. Talk a little bit about the amplifier. So the amplifier is kind of that middle ground on the continuum, right? So the idea is you usually start off as an ally and you work with and you engage in and you're starting to learn about the activism. And then at the end of the day, you want to be that accomplice, right? You like, you want to be that co-conspirator. I'm, I'm 10 toes down. I'm with you. But in the middle is that amplifier. And that is the person that makes louder or enlarges whatever the, the thing is that you're activating for. So they take the initiative to engage and exist in spaces where the um, marginalized person may not be to make sure that people understand what it is that they're advocating for. And so just to go a little bit deeper into each of the buckets here, that um, allyship, that's, you know, being active and consistent and practicing using your power and your privilege mm -hmm. to achieve equity and inclusion while holding ourselves accountable, you know, to that marginalized group. And so one of the, the, the really important things, and so, you know, I have to give him all the credit in the world. Steve Ives, who's the president and CEO of the YMCA at Metropolitan Houston, he said it. He said, I am asking you all, can I be an ally, right? And what was so delicious about that is because, unfortunately, sometimes, um, and, and they mean well, when allies get really energetic and really amped and they really want to help, they designate themselves as mm -hmm. an ally, right? But the reality is, if the person person that you're working with, if the social injustice or racial injustice or whatever it is that you're working on, if the person who will be better if you tackle these things doesn't consider you an ally, you're probably really not an ally. Because you don't really get the claim, you don't claim being, a, being an ally. No, someone has to ask you or someone else has to designate. You can't designate yourself. Like, I want to designate myself as the quintessential shoe queen of all time. Mm -hmm. But But can I? Or will the people bestow that honor upon me? I think there's a lot of discussion about that. Wow. Um, but as we talk about allyship, wow. you know, allyship is <laughs> wow. not something that is is passive either. You know, yeah. so you got to really, like you said, you got to be kind of 10 toes, 10 fingers all the way in there um, about this. So in order to be that, uh, be that ally. So the, the, the thing that I love about all of these, whether you're an ally or an amplifier or an accomplice, they're all verbs, right? Mm -hmm. All of these are action words. None of them are passive. None of them require you to sit on the sidelines. None of them allow for you to just kind of live in the shadows or, or be on the fence. They all require action for you to get engaged and for you to become a part of whatever this change is that you'd like to see. And as an ally, you know, it's required that you have this understanding and this self-awareness around the power and the privilege which you might hold. Right. And if you don't if you don't quite get that, it's going to be hard to be able to serve in that space right there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other thing that you have to do as an ally, and I think this is where I'm seeing a lot of people have these awakenings and these learnings, is that you have to realize how some really ingrained and and really unconscious bias does still pop up in your work and in your behaviors and in your conversations, even as you outly, outwardly told the world, hey, I'm an ally. Hey, I want to be involved in this. There will absolutely be times where your unconscious bias will jump up and you have to be open and transparent enough. When someone points it out, you could be like, you know what? 
My bad. Yeah, because you can't go in with this uh, self um, congratulate, right, yeah. or, or promoting this, or you know, and so you have to. You can't also go in. It's uh, you're thinking that you're saving saving someone. Yeah. It's rather it's about you know that work towards that equity, that fairness, and the justice which have many to you know yet to experience. Right. So you can't just read one whole article and now you're the ally extraordinaire, huh? Right. That's not how that works. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like, and I think you said this earlier is that allyship requires us us to hold ourselves accountable to advancing marginalized people. Yeah. So if you move along the spectrum to amplifiers, so there's a, an author named Matt Church, and he has this book called The Power of Motivational Leadership to Inspire and Influence. And, and that's what an amplifier is. They take that fight outside of proximity, right? So not only are they standing with a marginalized population when it's required, but then when they get in their own circles, when they get in their own spaces, or when they get in spaces where marginalized populations aren't represented or aren't invited to, they're still keeping that same energy, that same verb kind of behavior, and they're motivated and inspiring and helping to teach other people. Amplifiers must be, when they're in the room, their voice must be heard. Must be heard. And, you know, they, because we all go into different rooms. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's at the boardroom table. Maybe that's leading your, your meeting for your department or whatever the case may be. That amplifier needs to make sure that their voice is heard about, you know, that particular topic right there. Or otherwise, you know, that may get glossed over, glazed over a little mm. bit. And uh, no one else will be able to say that. But if you're an amplifier for a particular group, make sure your voice is always in the room. And people uh, who know me well, they'll know that I always say that make sure you put your voice in the room because that voice that's out in the parking lot after the meeting is right, over, right. that one is not going to be as valid as putting the, putting your voice in there. So be it, be that amplifier, be that champion, be that one who is going to speak up on the various topics right there because when you speak up, up, then you're holding people accountable for the thing that you spoke up about. It may not mean that your opinion or your idea may be, you know, heard always or follow through with, mm -hmm. but at a minimum, your voice is in the room. So, you know, here in Dallas, we have um, employee resource groups, right? And so we have the Women's Employee Resource Group. We have the African American Employee Resource Group, um, our Hispanic Latino Employee Resource Group, and our LGBTQ plus uh, resource group. And each group has a steering committee that's kind of guiding the work. And the steering committee has a chair, but then they also have an amplifier. And so for the women's group, the amplifier is not a woman. Imagine that, right? It is absolutely none other than you, Keith Vincent. And so as the amplifier, and you are the only male on that steering committee, so I'm sure those steering committee meetings are so kind of cute and fancy and amazing and awesome. I'm so, so... Uh, Very different from, uh, <laughs> Very from, from different. most. And uh, I'm not one that's, you know, shy with words, but I, what I do find myself in there as an amplifier is um, I'm listening. Mm -hmm. um, and not just putting out this male perspective on, hey, you all should, when I don't know how they feel about these different things. Because me as a male, I can't feel the same way well, as, a, as a female. That's true. So how, how did you feel when you were first approached about being the amplifier for the women's ERG? I mean, I was good because, um, one, I am just a, a fan of all things on this minority side, right? And right. That I think that, you know, people need a voice and if I can lend my my voice or my influence or my leverage in there somehow mm -hmm. then I'm willing to do that um, but I know when I went in, when I went into that first meeting I was thrown back a little bit to be honest mm -hmm. because of all the things that I had heard in there right and I had heard these things from different people uh, over time but that collective voice of the mm. women that was in that room mm -hmm. and to hear their stories, that was just mind blowing and powerful. Yeah, and, and you know, that was kind of the intent when we set up the ERGs here in Dallas, that that amplifier would probably be the person who would least probably join that group because we wanted to foster that learning and that understanding. And I've had the opportunity to watch you in that space. Most of the time I'm laughing, not gonna lie, but <laughs> There are other times where I'm kind of like, well, okay, Keith, because according to Matt Church, there are a few things that amplifiers must do 
do and I've absolutely seen you do these things. One of them is put in the effort, right? You got to learn from the population. You got to get into those meetings, hear the stories firsthand, understand how the world is, is, the, is being experienced by this group. And then you have to do your own work to become more knowledgeable. He also says that you have to communicate well and um, hone your message and your technique, which I've seen you advocating for that uh, women's empowered group in other venues and other places or in spaces where women weren't necessarily there. And then you got to know your audience so that you can tailor your message. So I don't know if guys have a secret bro code and you guys have a secret language, but whatever, you know, you're doing, it's working because you absolutely tailor the message depending on the group that you are talking to. And as a result, you know, lots of the initiatives and many of the things that that women empowered group is trying to accomplish, you know, they, they're kicking butt and taking names because they have an amplifier out there who's also telling the story and it's getting it into spaces that it probably wouldn't have been in otherwise. Well, I'm going to say thank you and I'm going to leave it right there because I don't know if I've ever heard you talk this long. It and won't me, happen again. And give me this type of yeah, compliment. Yeah, you better listen to the playback. It won't happen again. <laughs> so let's move on to talk about our accomplices. Um, and so those guys who is in that in that space of being accomplice is, you know, they listen with respect and they try to understand the cultural practices or dynamics that exist within a particular group or particular community. Mm -hmm. And uh, when accomplice, you know, they aren't motivated by this personal guilt or, or shame. You know, they may have their own agenda, but it, you know, they're explicit about it. Right. And so the other thing that accomplices do is they're not a, they're not afraid to bust up systems. Mm -hmm. Right. They question systems. They question authority, even if those said systems and authority benefit them. Right. Like if their privilege makes them the beneficiary of of some kind of treatment, they still, you know, they're like, nope, but that's not right. This is how we should be different. I'm not going away and we're not going to not have this conversation. Right. They want to realize, you know, make sure they have this mutual consent and trust also that they build with the, with the particular group. You know, that accomplice is going to be kind of like your, your ride or die. I yeah. Mean, yeah. They, I got a couple they, of them. You, yeah. I mean, you got to have those folks that's going to um, be like, hold on, what's going on here? Uh, yeah. Okay, you can't. Let me show you this way. Exactly. This is how we're going to get this done right here. Right. And I'm going to put my two cents in to make sure that it gets done. Like they use the, the power that they have, the authority, the access to resources, like all of the stuff that they have um, access to and whatever weight they have to bear. They use that on behalf of the marginalized population. Like of all the verbs, I, I would say that the accomplice is absolutely that most active, the one that is most involved, the one that is really at a systems level helping to change the course. And but they got to do that from building this whole trust. People got to yeah. they got to be able to trust them so that they can, you know, walk through these walls with them. Because when we talk about, you know, busting down the walls, you know, that could mean a whole lot of things. That could be your job that you're talking about. Yeah. OK, because, you know, one may have influence, the other may not have as much as influence. Right. And so if you don't have as much uh, influence, then you may not be able to, you know, bust down that wall. <laughs> if the you wall. got a shoe bill that's coming in and you need to get that shoe bill paid with your check, yeah. you might well, want to, yeah, you I get it. You want to think about that for I a second. I get it, I but get we it. Want, we want that accomplice to be there, you know, so that they can, again, to kind of be that ride or die with you to, to bust down the systems. And they're going to help to change those systems, those things that's been in place for this long period of time, mm -hmm. that they're going to question those things. And so that are we got a shift, you know, as we're in this pandemic right now, you you know, and we're talking about these uh, social issues that are out there, you're going to need to have some accomplices that step up to the plate right now to be able to help support these different groups out here. And and commit to you for the long haul because the reality is you're going to have some ups, you're going to have some downs. So Stephen Covey has a book called The Speed of Trust. And basically what that book is helping people discern is when you get frustrated if something is or is not happening, then you got to look at how quickly 
Um, did you gain the trust of the other people? Did you put the time and effort in? However quickly you can move from being distrustful to trustful is, is probably parallel to how quickly you're going to see some change. And they understand trust takes time. It ebbs and flows. You're going to have some ups and downs. Accomplices will make mistakes, right? You don't get to the accomplice level and then all of a sudden you're a content expert and you never make mistakes. You're a human being. Right. And you'll make some mistakes. You may have to backpedal, but you're in it for the long haul and you're willing to do the work. So we want to know, who are you? Are you an ally, amplifier, or accomplice? And on our website, ymcadallas.org slash cosmetic, we have a place up there that you can leave us a voice message or you can type in which one are you. We want to know who are you and then why are you that particular way right there. And so thank you for listening to Cosmetic. Where our conversations are global. Globally minded and locally focused. Check us out at ymcadallas.org slash Cosmetic. And as always. Stay dynamic. Stay energized. Stay Cosmetic.